Uh, let's go to the Supreme Court. Now, the Supreme Court today has, in a unanimous decision, dismissed an application by the 2020 NDC presidential candidate seeking leave to reopen his case. John Mahama, who is the petitioner, had urged the court to grant his request, saying he intends to subpoena EC Chairperson Jin Mensa to testify. His application follows an earlier ruling by the Apex Court that it cannot compel a party in a case to adduce evidence if the party does not want to do so. Chief Justice Kwesiene Yeboa, who read the ruling, said the petitioner has not indicated how the evidence he intends to solicit from the EC chairperson will help to determine the case. One of the leading cases on application to reopen cases is the Canadian case of 6711122 Ontario Limited versus Sagas Industries Canada Incorporation 2001 SCC 59 2 SCR 983 SCC, which was referred to as by Council for Second Respondent. In that case, the court approved of a two state test, which was first articulated in Scott v. Cook, 1970, OJ number 1487-20R769. That test, which is intended to assist the trial judge in exercising his or her discretion to reopen the trial, requires the application, the applicant to show. But the evidence he or she seeks to adduce is said that if it had been presented at trial, it would probably have changed the results. And two, prove that such evidence could not have been obtained by reasonable diligence before the trial. End of quote. This same test is what a party who intends to lead evidence or further evidence in the trial or on appeal must satisfy before a court could grant such a request. Relying on the English case of Young versus Kenshaw, and Betting versus Kensho, 1989-81, law times 531 and 532, Court of Appeal, held that the rationale behind the denial or grant of permission to order a new trial upon the discovery of further evidence must be the same as that which denies or grant permission to leave further evidence after the close of the case for the parties. In all the examples cited, the defendant did testify and the plaintiff found the need to call for fresh or further evidence to buttress their case. Though the courts, in almost all the instances, refused applications. In the instant case, however, the respondent decided not to testify at all. So no situation arises for there to be the need for the petitioner to call further or fresh evidence to clarify in and that was the ruling read, read, read there by the Chief Justice. Now, a member of the petitioner's legal team, Dr. Dominica Yene, in a reaction to the ruling at a press, at a press conference, or the press conference they usually, uh, uh, the press briefing they usually have after the ruling, described the ruling by the court as smoking of predetermined agenda. To reduce the, the petition into a single issue petition is rather unfortunate and smacks of a predetermined agenda to rule against the petitioner in this matter. The Supreme Court was called upon this morning to exercise discretionary power, with res I mean judicial discretionary power with respect to whether we should open our, we reopen our case. Now, in doing so, the court was uh, bound by the, the provisions of Article 296 of the Constitution, and we think that the reasons, as I've said, that the court gave were not, are not um, acceptable, they are not tenable. The reason is simply because you cannot expect that we should have made our evidence, the evidence that we're, we're going to um, present to the court available ex ante or before the fact. If the court is not convinced, whatever options are left, we will pursue them. But we are doing this for the people of this country. Um, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama brought this petition for the defense of the Constitution. He has a community of interest with the Constitution. And I want, I want to make <clears throat> one thing abundantly clear. Sixtus, if you were the plaintiff in this matter, if you had sat in the comfort of your room and tallied all the figures, and if you were convinced that this matter, the declaration was in error, the Constitution allows you to bring an action. And your community of interest is with the Constitution, to defend the Constitution of this country. The judges 
have sworn an oath to defend the constitution of this country. And so every constitutional issue that we think is germane and legitimate towards the resolution of this matter, we will raise until final judgment is given. That's Dr. Dominic Ayene there speaking after the ruling. Wakojo Opong Kruma is also a member of the second respondent's legal team. Here is his response. Their petitioner and their lawyers are not making a convincing case before the court. What they told them is not true. And that is why now they are asking the court to reopen their case so that they can put a party on the other side in the box and compel her to testify to make their case. It's becoming clear right before your very eyes that this is the reason for which their own supporters are telling them that it is about time that they abandon their case. But we want to conclude by dealing with this argument they make that they are doing this for the people of Ghana. And they are doing this in defense of the Constitution. We vehemently disagree. What they are doing, this so-called petition before the court, is not for the people of Ghana or in defense of the Constitution. It is for the political interest of Mr. John Dramani Mahama, who desires this media spectacle to sustain his brand equity and run again unopposed in the NDC in 2024. Let's be honest about it.